Crystallization is a science in vogue, thanks to its multiple advances and discoveries that appear, sometimes almost without us even noticing, in front of our very eyes. Have you ever found yourself mesmerised by a drink with ice? Maybe you haven't realised that truly the only crystal that's in front of me isn't the glass, but actually the ice that is now melting and cooling down my drink. The glass is simply an amorphous solid. In Spanish, both glass and crystal are commonly called crystal, even though glass should be called vidrio. After participating in the crystallising competition this year at school and familiarising ourselves with the different crystallising techniques of monoronium phosphate, like cooling method or by evaporation of the solvent. Whilst looking for the most striking results, we decided to opt for this second technique. With the crystallisation technique by evaporation, using the water from our lab installations, we observed a tetragonal growth in a bipyramidal habit. We suspect that the metallic impurities from the water and our starting materials would influence in the form and perfection of the results, so we use the collating agent, in our case EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, to try and take them out of the dissolution. The result would, was a noticeable change in the crystal habit from bipyramidal to prism as well as more transparency and less fragile. Bearing in mind the bipyramidal growth, due to the marked tendency of lateral growth the broken crystal has a tendency to regenerate. This event has to be summed with the fact that there is now more surface area where the crystal was broken. This favours a more intense growth in said area, to the point where we can observe, observe a practically complete regeneration of what was lost, before the crystal continues its general growth. We call this phenomenon the axolotl effect, after the Mexican amphibian axolotl, which has a great capacity to regenerate. The axolotl effect isn't as noticeable in the growth by evaporation with EDTA because the lateral growth isn't as so dominant as can be observed in the EDTA crystals. So the most significant part of our work was submerging complete or broken crystals or combinations of crystals in saturated solutions of ADP in different conditions with or without EDTA, and with or without colourants like permanganate or karma, allowing the growth by evaporation and always following the lab safety rules. One of the most striking results was a bipyramidal crystal grown in a solution containing permanganate ions, giving it its reddish colour. Then its growth was completed with a transparent layer of ADP in a prism habit thanks to the EDTA. You can observe clearly with this example the axolotl effect in a growth in three steps. A white crystal of ADP continued growing in an environment with permanganate, which gave it its reddish colour. Lastly, after breaking it, it regenerated its lost limbs, but this time ending in transparent and prism habit. Combining all that we had learned in various experiments, we had fun obtaining results that led us to win a crystallising competition during the school year and also even to publish an article in the magazine Investigación y Ciencia on the link that appears on the screen. An experience we could never have imagined when we started this adventure almost not knowing what a crystal was. <laughs>